Okay, guys, as promised, EQ Magnums. Now, these are the no longer available new New Zealand castings. I believe that uh, that entire facility was dismantled and sent to China, which is a sin, because these are pretty nice. My only... They have a few more inclusions that I would like to see, but that's not a big deal if the casting's thick enough. But I was a little surprised how thick the bowls are on the intake. Let's see if we can get a, a picture of that for you guys. Okay, sorry guys, this is very difficult for me to do with one hand. Okay, can you see where that is in that bowl? Right between the cylinders, okay? It's 150 thousandths before you touch it. So do not take a bunch of metal out of the bowls of these. Not a good idea. In fact, what I'm going to wind up doing to the bowls is just uh, clean them up to increase the efficiency a little bit. And the size on the sides that are thin, they're going to stay that way. The, the cylinder wall of the bowl is much thicker. It's, you can take some metal out of that. Which is good, because it increases your bias, which is not a problem. Okay, some of the things that are nice on these is they do have hardened inserts. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of inserts, but if you're going to put them in, whatever they used is hard as can be. Uh, I don't know why they can't make the bolt hill. You know what? You see this one, where the, the bowl actually overhangs? It should be like that all the way around the insert, so you can even it up. Instead, a lot of these, the insert is smaller diameter than, than the port. I'm not thrilled about that. It's tough to, uh, to make them look pretty at that point. Because, you know, pretty makes it fast. Right, guys? I think that's funny. All right. I did a little magic marker uh, on these. These, just like the uh, Mopar Magnums, have a really wide short side radius. In fact, you can see, see how those ports on the bottom flare way out. So far out that they're... This part is extremely hard to even get the burr in. So get what you can, and that's it. It would be nice, uh, according to my, my air speeds, it would have been nice to do, uh, do a little work in there, but it's very difficult to get in there. So I did what I could. The chamber is very similar to a regular Dodge Magnum chamber. These are cut for Magnum size 1.92, 1.625s. The valves that I have are they look like old used Magnum valves, so uh, I spoke to the owner. The owner is Addison. He is uh, building a, a Ram Charger, and he'd like to get 400 horsepower out of these with uh, without a huge cam. So uh, that's what we're going to be working on. He'd like to have a relatively relatively low duration cam. It will be a roller figures around 500 lift so all our air speeds will be taken at 500 and uh, we're gonna see if we can get it done for him. Right. the first time I did this video I put it on the bench I did the liquid and everything and it was just a, a shot a shot on the bowl straight back and that was it uh, there was nothing on the chamber at all I can show you the bore because I haven't touched the bore but the last video I did like this is going. I don't know where it went. I, I think it, ha it happens when I go to save. I don't know whether it goes when I save it or when I stop it, but I goof it up, and it's happened more than once. It's a real pain. Let's check out the bore. Okay, you can see the stock blue is not great, right? It goes back pretty far this way, but we've got practically nothing there. See if you can check out the shape 
of the uh, pushrod wall and how it is just hollowed out for that short side. It really, really moves over. And the, the roof is quite narrow. Quite narrow. But guess what? It works. The pinch is absolutely tiny. Probably as tiny as the 302 heads because these are made for hydraulic roller cams. Something else that I wasn't 100% thrilled about is the pinch is not round. If it was round, you could bore it out and put a sleeve in there. These are just paper-thin iron. And I mean paper-thin. Straighten them and forget it. That's it. If you need any area, you're going to have to take it out of the divided wall. There's nothing here. There's barely enough to even straighten the wall because it's a little... It's a little wobbly looking, uh, the way they cast it. Okay, the stock valve job looks pretty good, although it is uh, very wide on the seats. I think I'm going to check these. Since they're brand new castings, the guides should be good. I'm going to check the runout. If the runout is good, I'm going to leave the stock seats and then just work on maybe narrowing them and uh, doing something with this this razor sharp edge all around these is just ready these are just dying for uh, some detonation that's why I'm not not a big fan of uh, running stock stuff everything really needs to be gone over as far as I'm concerned okay the exhaust is night and day over LA stuff it's a great design it's small it's wide across the roof of the bowl. It doesn't have a huge amount of guide in the way. It's really done well. It's got a nice high short side radius. In fact, it's done so well. I'd like to aggravate all the Mopar guys. It's almost a Chevy design. <laughs> Sorry, guys. It's close. It's, it's a good design. It's a real good design. I really, really like this exhaust port. Actually, I like the intake port, too. For what it's designed for, it's really a good design. It's designed for, like, a truck motor, right? These actually... Uh, let me get the, the numbers off of these. Okay, CH318A. Okay? And they say CCH on them. Somebody stamped that on. Okay, so these are, are the old-style EQs. Uh, Probably, if you get them now, they'll be cast in China. They'll probably be quite a bit different. I know there was a big difference between the China cast, Chevy Vortex, and the New Zealand cast Vortex. I told the story before about how I did set a new um, New Zealand ones at DV shop, and they were cut for a 20216, and I just did a cleanup for Marvin because he was doing putting them in a nasty uh, street engine. And he wanted me to show him what to do. And I banged it out as quick as I could. And they were 275 CFM on the intake, 200 CFM on the exhaust. With no funny business. No, you know, no checking air speeds, nothing. Just go in there and clean it up and figure a couple little spots that could use area. That's it. Okay. The, uh, the China ones weren't nearly as responsive not nearly they were down I think I got them up around 250 CFM but they were also um, smaller valves and that was for a dedicated street application that needed to be very high torque so I couldn't go crazy getting high lift numbers okay like I said the exhaust is is night and day compared to LA stuff the, the floor has been raised up quite a bit. It's got a nice curved short side in the right direction. Okay. And you can see across the top of that bowl how wide that is. Great design. Absolutely great. Takes Does not take a ton of metal remove out of these for them to start to cook. In fact, I was pretty impressed with what they do stock. Okay, you can see how they did the short side radius on the exhaust. It's done right. It's really done nicely. Okay, so here is our starting point. 
some of the key numbers we need to look at. 300 lift. 184.2. Not bad, but not great. Okay. Max is out for what we're going to be doing, about 229. When uh, Addison and I were talking about these, I, I said, I said, uh, what are these supposed to flow? And he goes, well, they've been documented anywhere between 230 and 260. And I said, 230 sounds good. I, I Just quick look at them. I'd say they'll flow about 230. I was pretty close. So, in reality, they top out at 238. Really not bad for a completely stock casting. If you want to know what the stock magnums flow, I did that with a, with one of Rob's. Uh, Rob had a, a magnum, and we floated already. You'd have to check back on one of my old videos. The valve was completely stock. Let's grab one of those. Okay, dirty old valves, no backup. You can see the way it's shaped. It almost looks like it has an angle on top, but the 45 is huge, right? Interesting to take a look at your uh, at our at our swirl. Swirl curve is actually pretty good. The only anomaly is right here. We're up to 1300 and change. But without that, it would have been a nice progression up. Not bad, really. And at 527. 27 is more than we need. So, like DV says, you got plenty of swirl. Let's take a look at our exhaust. We got noise at 0.1 and we got noise at 0.2. Okay, not great. But once it starts going, like at 300, it's 145 already, which I think is better than the bone stock Z heads did at max lift, all right? You can go back and check, but I think that's about all they did. Take a look at how much more flow we have down here. Really, in reality, at 500, 177 and change, that's really good. And you throw a pipe on it, he's got a set of inch and, inch and seven eighths headers, it's 200 CFM with a pipe. Completely stock. Not bad. Really not bad at all. So those I have, uh, I don't know how much they're going to pick up by doing a little work to them because they're already good. That's the problem with a good design, right? If you start off with a good design, it's a lot harder to get gains. You start off with like a Ford E7 head, which is just horrendous. It only flows like 160 on the intake and 115 on the exhaust. And then you get it up to 230 on the intake and 185 on the exhaust. And uh, big difference, right? These are going to be harder to get gains because it's a better design. Check out our, our pinch air speeds. Right? The bottom of the pinch is bigger and has way more flow than the narrow top. Interesting the way they did that, right? I remember, you know, first learning about cylinder heads. I used to read it. All the action is at the top. And then my friend Nick, who used to own a machine shop I used to be at all the time. He's like, no, Charlie, all the action's on the floor. And I'm like, come on, that's not what all the books say. And he's just like, listen. <laughs> he was a good guy. Take a look at our roofs. Okay. Center of the cylinder is much faster than the straight wall. Okay, I'd like to even them up a little bit. And the center of the cylinder, which is the big angle over, is cranking on the short side. So they made that port a lot wider, and that's where the air wants to go. Interesting to think about, right? But I would like to get them a little more even across the short side radius. So we'll have to take a look at that. Now these, because the port was worked so well for what it was, I expect these to be pretty even across from side to side. And... Uh, Take a look at the bottom, right? Pretty even. Not completely dead in the center. 321, 325, very even. A little bit low in this corner compared to this one. And a little bit lower up here than I would have expected. Actually, both of these numbers are a little bit lower than what I would have expected. But overall, you still got 300s and change. 
right? 300 right in the middle. It's kind of interesting. The port is not that big. So you got 300 in the middle and you got 100 a little bit further down. So that's a big velocity gradient in very short short amount of space, right? All right, what else have I got to show you? Oh, I know what you're going to like. You're going to like this a lot. I had this all set up on the bench, and I did a video on it, but that video disappeared. So you have to get piecemeal now. Ooh, shiny. I know how much guys like shiny. This is uh, brandy new before my dirty fingers even touch it. Uh, this has actually already been on the bench. You can tell because it's got the tape on the the ports that I'm not using. We float it through number eight. Why did I pick number eight? Well, it's the upper plenum, which has more trouble flowing. And usually that runner is the lowest flowing runner. I don't think I'm going to flow every runner on this because uh, it's not that kind of project. It's uh, And if you take a look at the shapes, this is a really sweet manifold really sweet uh, they did they did a nice job on this I mean I will show you guys uh, this is gonna get a full work over but it's really good to start with so I'm starting with a good head design and I'm starting with a good intake design that should mean it's a piece of cake right maybe not actually I'll give you a little uh, foreshadowing I already flowed this on the stock head, stock manifold on the stock head. I put my 770 carb on it with my uh, k &N snub stack, and you wouldn't believe the flow difference over the bare head. I'll leave it at that for now. All right, guys. I can't think of anything else we got to cover tonight. So thanks for hanging out. Have a good night.